What is up, ladies and gentlemen? We are going into a new map by Biddy B called Germination, and we will be seeing Nablime and Hamster duke it out, ZVP style. Nablime in the top left, Hamster in the bottom right. GLHF's exchanged. This map is going to be an XY symmetrical map, two spawns. So these are the only two spawns you see here. We do have this uh, odd feature of the map, which uh, is dedicated towards advanced workers only, and you even have a little spot for where you can optimally place your town center. And it looks like, judging by the mineral field count here, it looks like nine to me. Yep, and uh, only one gas. Now, this uh, the modern version of the map does have a, a ridge in addition to the geyser, uh, but it looks like they played a couple of rounds uh, without that change. There's also, there were a bunch of uh, issues with the tiles and stuff that eventually got fixed, uh, but th this is some of the first matches played on this map. So it should be kind of interesting, should be kind of interesting. I did cherry pick the replays that were submitted. I think there were six games in total. We'll only be casting three in the set because of the length of those matches, and some of them were really, really short. So I decided uh, probably filtering those ones out is a safe bet here. And I'm looking for a hatch. Not exactly. Now this one is a, this beggar's belief. He could do it right next to the minerals, or he could do it in the choke, or he could do it on the ramp, but he kind of decides to pick in the Bermuda Triangle central there. Uh, no real worries at the end of the day, because, you know, he can at least defend his uh, situation, but uh, again, you know, I don't know uh, what what order of uh, match this is. I don't think this is their exactly first match on the game, uh, on this map rather. So I'm sure there's certain things that will get ironed out with time. But uh, yeah, Biddy B, obviously, the author of many maps. He's uh, tried to make a map where it's like, oh, you've got the jungle from, uh, you know, the jungle tiles and stuff, and you've got uh, trees sprouting from all over the place. And the idea is that it uh, will eventually be uh, seeded with life. So you got a little bit more stuff going on there. Uh, no unit out of the gateway. The first gateway over here is Hamsters just making consistent scribe production. Uh, we will have a two gate opener here with no military unit opened up. And we even have a little bit of a proxy pylon uh, just by the edge of this Hatcheros here. So uh, good scouting from Nablime to figure this out. There's a warden that's gonna be dropped. And this is a good punish, actually, because it does force more and more workers to pull off the line so that they can do enough damage to the warden to force a cancel. Uh, if this was followed up by a single military unit from the first gateway, I feel like it would actually have hit pretty well. Uh, but even still, you know, pulling three workers, you also have to worry about the scout worker. It does get canceled, judging by the resources. And, of course, there's another worker chasing the uh, Nablime scout just to stop the scribe from doing any more damage. And, of course, you also scout the first military purchase from your opponent. In this case, it's Zeth's. So Nablime is definitively behind in the opening stage. His opponent does have double gateway production. Uh, the first military unit that they made, I guess it, it must have decided to go for the Draken. I thought there was a Legionnaire at some point, but I might have just been auto-completing that in my head because Hamster has done that numerous times. And yeah, your opponent has the uh, extra production afforded to them from the gateway. I, I do think that maybe the second gate isn't that necessary because if you think about it, the first gate could have had a unit to support the warden and the nexus could have been a lot faster. So little things could have been uh, improved there, I think, for the build order. Uh, but despite that, uh, Hamster will still definitely be ahead a couple of workers here uh, as the nexus comes down. If he then dropped an embassy without any additional military units, he would be at risk of potentially being overwhelmed. And actually, I really like this little Zeth run by that's staged up here. Hamster being a little bit lax in uh, leaving his uh, base, com his front door completely unkept, and uh, that pylon will go down. So this is actually going to be a very uh, fast match, it looks like. Yet another one. The Dracodins are withdrawn. You know what? As long as the scribes are, you know, drilled properly, we actually shouldn't see too much of an issue here. Uh, we do need to see another pylon go down. Indeed, it does end up happening. The scribe returned home from the offensive. A lot of workers are going down. So remember when I said Hamster is decidedly ahead? Well, that is decidedly the inverse now. And Nablime should be able to coast to an easy victory. But the second Nexus is about 75% of the way done. So it really depends. I mean... In typical Nablime fashion, he's gone for more workers, so he will not be able to capitalize upon this with extra damage. And now if no, if uh, Hamster decides to move across the map with his Dracodins, he is going to finish up a fourth. He could just walk right past the circuit and step inside the main base. Nablime is um, notorious for not really... At least maybe he's like... I don't know what his uh, style is exactly you would describe it as, but he often goes for workers here. His only military units are going to be, as, as the Seth has died in the, in the burrow, his only military units are actually going to be the uh the, the single pair of zeths that he's queued up here so that kind of shows you his style he's uh 
if he can get away with not making work, uh, not making military units, he will. We see zealots coming out here. Actually, you know what? Call me crazy, but with that zealot, I think you can just bust the two circuits and the game can be over from there. So I don't want to call it too decidedly either way because, again, Hamster is currently very behind. But the fact that Nablam has doubled down on the worker production and only has two zeths to his name, he's not going to be able to do anything with those two zeths. Workers can dismantle uh, the just the two zeths or whatever. And the zealot arriving over here means that the circuits will certainly go down. Uh, and, you know, the Hydra then is coming, uh, but we need to see some zeths pulled out over here. The flash shielding can definitely kick in to help out our Protoss brethren. Uh, he is uh, cycling them back. The first one is going to go down. The workers are pulled to try to defend the hive. Uh, first, Kagrin fully going down. And now, yeah, you can absolutely just uh, let the Zealot do some tanking. You don't you don't have to lose it, per se. Um, but it looks like maybe that will end up happening. Should probably uh, withdraw long enough to have it take a couple more hits. We do have some more Kagrins finishing over here. And, uh, yeah, look at that worker count. It was 24 at one point. And now, now it's 11. So, uh, you know, just in case you want, this is like the worker throw episode. Uh, if you guys wanted to see some down and dirty games where these players are just deciding to, uh, you know, leave their front gate unlocked, you know, uh, not build any military units, look absolutely goofy all the time. That's exactly the show that you've come for. Uh, normally, we actually see a much more measured game out of these two opponents. So it's a, a bit of a change of pace, uh, but it's good to see that everybody has their off days. Now, if you want to get in on the bandwagon here because we got diggity making casts on youtube i'll link uh, to his channel in the description of this video if you're curious he casted some matches that were played in march invitational b we got regular tournaments running all the time we got the gauntlet running we got all sorts of crazy shit going for qualifying into the next tournament and uh building out some more exciting additions to the game in the form of tutorials in the form of uh, single player content all sorts of stuff if you want to get into the action well you know where to go the description box has a link to our Discord server, and you can also get started getting the uh, the whole procedure underway for joining us in the future of the RTS. The uh, new fraud launcher is in development, actually nearing completion by the time, uh, as of the current date of recording. Uh, so when you're listening to this, uh, there's a good chance that it is impending, that there is a big uh, sort of looming horizon here, and we are about to cross over it into a brave new world where you don't have to worry about making a Windows Defender exception uh, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the Avalov is gonna go ahead and scout out for our Zerg boy here in the blind. I am seeing a number of, yep, it's just workers. It's a, I was waiting for any other military units being made. The Hydra then is done, but it hasn't actually been used yet. No gas being banked means it's not Skiths. The witness is gonna come over and see yet again, very greedy play out of here. But Hamsters called, crawled back the worker lead. He did make the embassy. Uh, that's obviously used for witnesses, which are observers, envoys, which are shuttles, but also scribes, which are probes. And when you're thinking about it in those terms, uh, oh, and the artisan. So we'll actually get to see uh, the artisan used for this uh, you know, wor air worker only base. Dragonins should just step on this Avaleth, but Hamster's being a little bit lax with his uh, reaction to that. He's now going to see if he can scramble over. If uh, Nablime is smart, he'll actually part uh, dart over here in, in the upper direction. I I don't know what uh, what we're thinking over here. I guess the witness spotted that there's only the four circuits and no combat units being made. So, sure, that makes sense. Artisans are being completed. So if you guys don't know how the artisan works, uh, by the way, when this Nexus drops, the, the scribe... Oh, shit, the Zeth got stuck. He's got to get get issued a stop order. There we go. Now he's figured it out. Now that's a funny bug. I'm sure we'll fix that eventually. Uh, the artisan works uh, in such that it, uh, as it harvests resources, uh, it doesn't need to return them to a town center. It just channels, and eventually the resource warps away. Uh, so we'll, we might get a chance to look at that when uh, Hamster remembers to uh, pay, pay attention to that unit again. Look at this. Just as the circuits are attacking, busy attacking the uh, the other circuit in the back to try to clear out some, some rallies, almost the perfect timing here for Hamster, who's going to charge on forward. He did get a Stargate down, and so Nablime responded to that by making some spraths for anti-air. But uh, there needs to be way more action over here. We have no Hydras on the field. Only two of them actually spawned and none in production. Now we have one. The Legionnaires, I'm not super crazy about the Legionnaires. The Zealots would definitely help to bust this a lot better. Uh, but there is an Exemplar on the way for heavy anti-ground process. He is going to go ahead and make the charge again. But at this point, the uh, production cycle has finished up. So we are going to see uh, a focus down on that wounded circuit from earlier. Oh, maybe not. Actually, uh, changes focus a little bit. And you can stutter step this situation. Just focus down the... Uh, the frontline units here. You definitely want to kill those Hydras because they ignore the armor of the Drakadin very well. Same for the Zets, actually. And it looks like Nablime thinks that he's uh, going to go ahead and get away scot-free with this. 
You know, six Dracodons can still do some damage. We do have some more units potentially streaming on through, but it looks like those four Dracodons are going to loop back up with their brethren and maybe see if they can take a stab at the uh, northeastern route. And now the circuit will be destroyed. Although I guess destroyed is a, a wrong term because it turns into a, a Kagrant and then the Avaleth can teleport it. So it looks like that's uh, what Nablime has in mind, so he can migrate his units over. And this is another reason to kill the Avaleth, force him to remake that. That's 50 gas that he's spending on not Hydras, not, you know, tech in general, not a Skithricor, etc., etc. So we do have some Skithricors coming, actually. Uh, I don't think that they're going to be in significant quantities here, uh, so we shouldn't actually see a big uh, worker, a big amount of worker damage or anything. Again, looking at Hamster's worker count, it's looking pretty nice. He does need to pad his uh, stats for military, though. Uh, definitely floating a little bit of, on the mineral side. Could add a couple more um, gateways at some point. Maybe uh, over here, a couple, couple of grand libraries even. Do you one better? Avaleth going to come over here to see if it can establish the Kagrin, but there's an Exemplar over here. There's a bunch of Dracodons over here. There are some Legionnaires. They're not going to get it get in into the action for a little while. Now they're there. And uh, yeah, there's just way too much here for the Protoss. So this position is going to be... Uh, basically given up at some point. The Exemplar dealing good splash damage to soften up the Hydras and allow the Dracodons to step on forward. And it uh, looks like there's no more reinforcements here for Hamster. It doesn't look like he... I don't know what happened there with the Focus Fire because it was for sure a, a called fight in favor of the Protoss. But somehow, some way, Nablime just continued to A-move some macro units over there. And at the same time, the Skits have hit the uh, Worker line. You don't want to do this versus Skith, of course, because they deal splash damage. So you can tell the, the Worker count here dropping pretty massively. There's like eight or nine Workers lost there. Um, you don't want to do that. You want to hit the stop key like you're defending from a Reaver drop, and StarCraft 1 is Terran. Uh, you want to... Well, I guess you could do it as Zerg, too, but nobody does Reaver drops versus Zerg in, in the uh, average meta. So only four Skits left. You're not going to really accomplish too much there, but here's the ground unit flood coming out here from Nablime. We do have the Exemplars up still, and uh, you can maybe just take uh, advantage of Nablime lackadaisically moving his units across, so he is going to end up losing quite a few of those. Uh, Hamster being a little bit uh, ca overly cautious, I think, and uh, should definitely just be focusing down these units, especially as they <laughs> dart back and forth within the uh, the targeting there. Another thing you can try to check out is how many workers you have on the, on the resources, because there's nine mineral fields in the main. You want to multiply that by two to get the amount of baseline workers you want before over full saturation. So he's uh, slightly oversaturated in the main, heavily oversaturated, could take half of these workers almost and pull them over to the third, and he'd have a huge spike in income, but he's not really spending what he has anyway right now. He did add two more gates in the low ground. It did add the Stargate in the, in the low ground as well, only adding one grand library. I guess in general, one of the things that I'm noticing and something that I'm trying to fix on my own play as well is that when you have like 500, 600 mineral in the bank, let alone double that as a hamster currently does. What you want to do is like preemptively spend all of that on a round of additional production <clears throat> structures because that will give you access to, you know, the ability to, to more uh, fully spend those resources. And uh, it's, a, it's a bit of a surprise to me that uh, more players aren't doing that. Uh, you know, I see Hapsaya sometimes float a lot of money, for example. I see uh, Shambler also float a lot of money sometimes. I think everybody kind of does at, so, at a certain point. A uh, Zerg can kind of spend everything down, but they do so at their own peril if they're using all of their larvae on one thing because they've slipped on the macro cycles. Uh, so far, you know, when, another way that you can gauge a player's skill is by looking over at the larva counts underneath their hatches and being like, okay, well, you, you might be floating money. Are you floating the larva? And if, if they're not, then they probably need more hatches. If they are, then that's a sign that they're uh, not spending their money because of that reason. But Hamster is, you know, pretty uh, proactively looking to expand additional spots. We do have five skits over here. The one Warden isn't going to defend against it too well, but, you know, might be enough to soften them up. Uh, not 100% sure. It really depends on what the skits end up going for. We have another Artisan being made. I think maybe the skits might have claimed all the Artisans over there in that uh, back base. A little surprising that uh, Nablime himself isn't going for it. But he's still on tier one, so he actually can't evolve his workers just yet. So I guess that's why he's not going for it. I'm just assuming, you know, like it's 13 minutes in, no tier two. But uh, that actually happens more than you'd think nowadays. Witness going to spot where the skits are. These uh, zealots are going to get heckled by them. Uh, this might trigger a bit of an attack, uh, especially as a lot of these ground units are leaving. But there's a lot of ground units here for a long while. Uh, so the exemplars are going to be splitting their focuses. I think they should probably try to double their efforts on one particular spot instead of worrying about stuff like this. You can see the uh, Dracodons overkilling, the exemplars overkilling. You'd probably prefer to have some sort of Gladius move maneuver over here to not overkill quite so much. Uh, the Dracodons should definitely not be the focus for Nablime. He wants to see if he can pick apart these exemplars. There's going to be one shot over here coming up that will uh, pick this uh, right side one up eventually. There we go. And the Skits are also going to come in to assail them. 
And uh, yeah, at least one more is going to end up going down as a result. We do have uh, two more back at the base, as well as the Dracodins over here. And this is a, a big clump over here where Exemplars can really, really get a lot of value. I did hear uh, what sounded like a Cantavis death, which is a little bit unfortunate because the storm could have been great there. The Engram is up, but it will get focused down. Uh, pretty good committal there. And more and more Hydras coming on in. Iral Iris starting behind this, so Tier 2 is coming. Uh, but that means that it's all going to be low-tech units in reaction to whatever hamster can muster as a defense. And this Nexus was not focused down despite a lot of potential DPS in the form of the Hydras. So that's a little bit of a missed opportunity to completely destroy the 6 o'clock location. Instead, Hamster is going to be able to keep it alive and force his opponent back to because he needs to hold on to these Hydras. He doesn't have the Vespian after the uh, Tier 2 expenditure to really make a lot more. He does have uh, at least uh, you know 10 uh, back at home, but it's really actually quite valuable to keep, keep the uh, 8 that he's got on the field alive. Now, there's a, a Big Zeth run by going to be fomenting over here, and there's not really any splash, any crowd control whatsoever. We've got a couple of Amaranths going to be uh, able to duel those Zeths for quite a while, uh, but that could still end up causing some havoc, some uh, some confusion. There's a lot of melee over here, actually, so as long as that hamster responds by pulling the melee force to the left over to respond to this, I think he might be okay. Uh, there's also a bunch of idle units over in this location, so what does he do with this force? I think he's probably feeling like he's got this situation under wraps, and he's gonna see if he can stab into 12 o'clock to keep the base count low. Dracodins are gonna get overwhelmed, uh, Wardens are gonna get overwhelmed, but I think overall he's only gonna end up losing, like, the Warden and two Drax. He might end up losing this pylon over here, which would be unfortunate, because it powers, uh, I guess it doesn't power that embassy, uh, but it does power one of those gateways, and there is going to be a big counterattack fomenting over here for uh, Nablime, looking to maybe stab in and kill off the 6 o'clock location. There were some more Zets over there revealing that's not where the army was, but 12 o'clock being traded out over here might favor Hamster, as he's already harvested a decent amount of money. The only concern I have is that his uh, third base is not looking too defensible here. Uh, the Zealots could probably be left over to mop this up, and then maybe he could take the rest of the force and go back home, especially considering Zerg are at the gates. So we're seeing a nice uh, back-and-forth map, uh, or at least matchup play on this map so far. We get to really put it through its paces. But I think the uh, Zealots and Drax holding their uh, ground over here and uh, being overwhelmed and held, right, uh, not actually uh, being able to get anything done there, it is going to allow Nablime to win with entirely Tier 1 Armadas. Nothing from Tier 2 whatsoever used there. I don't even think he got any Tier 2 defenses up, at least not that effectuated the fight. But uh, looking at the production tab, he did have the Iskagiteth coming, he did have the Nest, he did have the Spire. So I would just say, generally speaking, uh, when you're in that situation as Hamster, what, the, the kinds of things you want to look at, and this game was played a little while ago, so they've probably gotten a lot of more practice between each other. Uh, but that game looked very winnable for the Protoss player. And I think Nablime can absolutely meet somebody who's a little bit more aggressive, maybe somebody like Hapsaya, if they ever end up overlapping again and playing some more. And I think for sure you'll end up seeing Nablime have to tighten his game up a little bit as far as uh, decision making for when to spend that money and get those things done. But hey, that was the first round for the uh, set that we have here. Again, there's three games overall that I've decided to cast. The uh, other one might be a little bit on the shorter side, but then there's a second one that's going to be longer. So we'll do those in a second part video coming tomorrow. Hope you guys are enjoying Cosmonarchy and the Cosmonarchy daily content train. And uh, yeah, we'll keep it coming. See you guys next time.